Hello everyone, it is Monday and I'm very excited because this week I will share with you uh, five common mistakes that I've seen dancers make when it comes to dancing with confidence or mistakes that dancers make that either make them feel or seem um, like they lack confidence in their dancing. So um, every day this week, I'm going to share one mistake until we get to five by Friday. Uh, but before we start with mistake number one, um, and of course, if you're here, please say hi. If you have any questions throughout, please um, post them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them live. And uh, if you're watching the replay, definitely write some questions, say hi, and I will answer them as a comment, uh, not live. Uh, but anyway, before we start with mistake number one, let's um, first define what dancing with confidence means. So confidence or self-confidence is our trust and our belief and our ability to perform some kind of task, and in our case, it's a, a dance, or face challenges, any challenge that comes our way. So self-confidence is partly based on our past experience, okay? How we've been brought up, um, what we've been taught, what we've learned about ourselves, either from other people or from our own experiences. And self-confidence focuses on the future, right? On our future ability to perform a task, to perform a dance. Um, how am I going to dance tomorrow? But it also relies on our past, on our prior performance. Uh, how did I dance yesterday, right? So the way, um, the way I feel about how I can dance at a session tomorrow is best on how well I believed that I danced in the session yesterday. If, for example, I believe either because of my own judgment of my dancing or because of somebody's feedback that yesterday I didn't dance well, dance X, then I won't have the confidence in my ability to dance dance X the next time it comes on. Now, why is it important? So a lack of confidence can stop us from doing things we love, from continuing to learn and to grow, to get new skills, to improve whatever it is that we would like to improve and so on. So a lack of confidence can really and will hinder us. So let's look at, the, at a very common mistake, very common mistake that I've seen dancers make that negatively affects their confidence level. So, mistake number one is relying on other dancers for steps. Relying on other dancers for the choreography. So this is when dancers have to constantly look at other dancers, other people, to be able to follow along with a dance. So most of us do this from time to time, right? Either it's a dance we don't know and we just want to follow along, or we just learned this dance, but it's not yet in our, in our muscles, or it's a dance we haven't done in a while, and it might take us some time for the muscle memory to kick in, right? So that's okay. But when you do this most or all of the time, this is when it will affect your overall dancing confidence level. This means that you never actually learn a dance, okay? It means that you don't internalize a dance and allow it to become part of your long-term memory, okay? It means that you can only dance with external cues 
and you can never rely on yourself and your own knowledge and your own body. And now, more than in the past, right, when we're dancing mostly alone in our homes, it's even more important to rely on ourselves for the choreography because it's, it's hard to constantly look at the screen while you're trying to dance in a circle, right? So this will also affect your posture by having to always look down at other dancers' feet and it will really affect and put a strain on your upper back, your shoulders, your neck. And what it also does is that your gaze is always down, right? And so the way you look to other people looking at you is that you seem close and you seem like you lack in confidence because, you know, this is, this is our body language. This is what we project. When we look down and kind of closed with our upper back, we seem to be lacking in confidence about what we're doing. It also means that you won't be able to anticipate the next move. And this is really important because, for example, if the direction, cha the, sorry, the direction changes very quickly, all of a sudden, boom, you change direction and you, and you don't know that it's coming, you don't know to anticipate it, you can actually hurt yourself. So either by, you know, pulling something like a little, um, and it, it can be a tiny, tiny little, but it hurts so much for a very, very long time, especially in our back when you, your body's trying to go one way and then you're trying to change directions while you're moving in a different direction, it can really hurt you. And worse, it can even make you lose your balance and fall on the ground. And I've seen dancers that it happened to them. So this is actually dangerous and we don't want that in ego dancing, right? So when you constantly rely on other dancers, you need to always pay close attention to what they are doing, which takes a lot of concentration, a lot of mental effort. So you can't dance with this freedom and this ease and allow yourself to really kind of let go with the music. And you miss that therapeutic aspect of dance, which is so amazing and so wonderful. And by never learning the choreography, how can you be confident in your ability to execute the dance? How can you walk into a session and think and feel, I can dance well? So first, try to notice how often you have to rely on other dancers for choreography. Is it only occasionally a dance here and there out of the entire session? Or is it for most dances okay so what if you do what do you do what do you do if it's the latter if it's most of the dances that you need to rely on um if you if you do that's okay um i know uh that's okay it's okay. Whatever it is, is okay. I am sharing this mistake with you, but I'm also going to tell you what you could do about it. Um, so the short answer is you need to learn the choreography. You need to learn the choreography. That's just it. But I also know that it is challenging. Um, so here's a bit of a longer answer. Okay. So for a dance to become part of your long-term memory, muscle memory that's often referred to meaning you don't need to summon this mental effort to retrieve the information but your body just knows what to do um there are a few strategies that uh that you can take number one know the terminology of the dance style that you're learning so that applies to any dance style of course in our case israeli dance but knowing the terminology helps our brain encode what we're learning. And repeating the terms to ourselves 
help us both with the visual cues, so where we can imagine the steps, and the auditory cues, hearing the steps, right? And in Israeli dance, for example, if a teacher says, na le na le to you, and you know what that means, you already have a whole sequence under your belt, right? You have two step together, step and pivot. So you don't need every single step. Your brain will already know that, and you won't require any mental effort to retrieve these steps, right? It will come automatically. Knowing the terminology also helps with the second strategy uh, when it comes to learning a brand new dance from a teacher, especially if the teacher calls out the steps and teachers out there, you should be doing that to help your dancers learn. Uh, the first time through the dance, you would probably look at the teacher. That's fine. But after that, try to look away from the teacher as, for as many steps as you can. Uh, if the teacher calls out, for example, walk, walk, cha-cha, and you're not a beginner dancer and you've done this before, you know what it means, right? You don't need to actually look at the teacher for that. So the more you can look away, the quicker the dance will be internalized and processed by your body. Uh, third, the third um, strategy is using cues, okay? And we're all different learners, so you kind of need to know how you learn best. Um, and the cues that we can use to learn a dance is number one, verbal cues. So that is names of steps, the counts, sounds that we make, for example, papa or tata that help us kind of uh, remember. Um, what helps me often is to sing the steps to the music, just sing it to myself. Um, and then try to notice any changes or accents in the music that are attached to a particular step or change of direction. Uh, like a papa, for example, that you hear it in the music and the feet do the same thing. So that kind of connection really helps. So that's your verbal cues. Visual cues um, is watching others, like the teacher, other dancers, watching a video of the dance. Uh, and most importantly, and this is really, really important, and try to do that as often as you can, is watching yourself dance, the dance, in your mind's eye. So closing your eyes and really seeing yourself execute the steps. That really, really helps. And the third cue is our movement cue. So noticing the rhythm and how your body feels when it moves to music, um, the changes of direction, anything that is about the movement itself and the way your body is moving through space. So research has shown that the most effective way to learn and remember choreography is by combining all of these three types of cues, the verbal, the visual, and the movement or the kinesthetic cue, okay? And our fourth strategy is Repetition, 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 and I'm sure you've heard this a lot. The more you repeat a dance, um, and again, while looking away as much as you can from other people, the faster it will be processed into long-term memory. And that might mean that you'll need to practice the dance at home, and that's okay. Uh, and uh, we're lucky that uh, most Israeli dances have videos, often with a teach video, um, so that's a really, really great resource to go home and practice with. Um, the only maybe little challenge is that they go through the dance, like they do a very quick walkthrough, or it's in Hebrew and you don't understand the language. Um, but I created a short video with strategies on how to learn a dance from a video. So if you're interested in, in watching that, please let me know. Uh, you can either, um, comment here or you can message me directly and I'll be more than happy to send it your way. So this is mistake number one um, that dancers make when it comes to uh, dancing with confidence and that is relying on other dancers for the steps and the choreography instead of on your own knowledge, your own memory and your own ability. So if you have any questions, please let me know here, or again, you can always uh, send me a private message and I'll, of course, respond 
as soon as I can and come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow, same time, same place for mistake number two. See you then.